Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to all YBs in Malaysia, Singapore, and around the world. Thanks so much for tuning in to our live talk this evening. Please allow me to introduce myself for those who do not know me. My name is Michael Chung, and we have Howard uh, over there. Yes, yeah, Howard. Okay, we both will be your host for tonight. Okay, so uh, what we have tonight is actually a key speaker. Uh, he's a Malaysian who currently resides in London who get serious in photography uh, five years ago. Yeah, he's very passionate in landscape photography and develops special interest in wildlife as well. He has been traveling to many countries in the world and to get all his you know, beautiful picture and his dream shots. Please join me in welcoming Ro Robin Lee. Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. Robin, over to you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Howard, mm. for having me here. So uh, hang on, let me start presenting my screen. So let me know if you can see my screen now. Thank you. Yep, all good. Okay, thank you. Um, right, my name is Robin Lee, and um, I'm from from I'm I'm Malaysian as well, but um, right now I'm living and working in the UK. Um, so on this presentation, I will explain how do I compose for the particular scene that I am at and also study how the lighting goes. So unlike the technical side of the camera, such as the start speed, f-stop, tripod, ISO, focal length, etc, etc, composition is fundamentally quite abstract and communicating the scene into your photo can be quite tricky. So there are a couple of factors that I always keep in mind when I want to photograph a scene. So, but the first one will be the focal point. Um, the second one is leading line, the balance um, on the scene that you're looking at, layers, framing, foreground, reflection, and simplicity. So, first one, oh, not keyboard. The first one is the focal point is the is your point of interest when you want to photograph the scene. So let's go to the first picture. So we know this picture is quite famous. It's, it, it's in New York. Um, this photo is taken from a helicopter tour when I was there in four years ago. So on this particular image, clearly the downtown Manhattan is, a, is the focal point here in, in the middle of the picture. What draws my eye to the center to the center of the image is the boats that goes around from the Hudson River on the left and the East River on the right to the beautiful warm tones in the sky and to the center of the image. So, and also the com complementary colors between the light and the contrast also plays in the part that draws my eye into the center. So this is how I look at it at the scene and also how I um, Photoshop and to draw the eyes of the viewers. And then the second photo, again, this is in downtown, um, this is in Man Manhattan as well. Um, the, first thing I, um, the first thing I would say is the, in, in the middle of the picture where um, it shows the Brooklyn Bridge itself. So what draws me into the Brooklyn Bridge is the, the building and the road that, that takes you from, 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 from both sides and the foreground into the middle section where the bridge is. And also, obviously, the fantastic um, um, star created from the street light that draws your eyes straight. You know, because of the, the light between the, there's a light and the shadow and the darkness that just draw your eyes in, in, into the middle. And uh, if you can see at the bottom of the um, bridge, at the center, that is the Empire State Building. So I don't know how. I, I'm not sure whether they created this bridge on purpose or what. But it's literally right in the center of the bridge if you were on that particular place. And uh, what's so special about this, another thing special about this image is um, because we had a really bad snowstorm um, overnight and um, I hardly see any pictures on this spot with the snows around. So I think that makes it a bit special as well for me anyway. So, <clears throat> and uh, we move on to the third photo, which is in, New York. Uh, yeah. Robin, good question. The uh, yeah. starburst is did the, the starburst the previous picture, the starburst 
Is that the real Star Wars or you actually pull it in? Yeah, this is the real Star Wars. Oops, there's some, some interference. Is it mine? Sorry, sorry, it's mine. Okay. okay. No, the Star Wars is the real Star Wars. It's not add-on. Okay. Yeah. Looks great. Yeah. No. <laughs> So the third one, this is the um, Queensboro Bridge in East Manhattan. Um, I think what draws me into the bridge itself is the scale is prominent in comparison to the surroundings that makes this bridge is the focal point. As well as the lights on the bridge that draws the eye into it, and the bridge leading the way into the image towards Manhattan on the right. So I think this is why um, I think this picture works best in terms of um you want you know the focal point which is the bridge you want to give it like a bit of a pop on, on the picture and also obviously it depends on where you are how you're going to uh, which focal point that you need to use to um convey the picture that that's so so you could bring out the bridge as a pop into the picture so let's move on to the fourth picture um this is Quite a popular spot if you go to Mount Fuji. So again, um, the the road itself and the building itself that draws your your, your eye from the foreground, which are at the bottom, and then it draws you into the end of the road and then brings you up to the sky, which is the Mount Fuji, which is the uh, the, the point of interest. And let's move on to the next picture that I want to show you, which is. Um, this photo, this video is taken in Iceland. Um, the focal point is the fantastic cloud formation in the middle, of, of, on the top frame with the orange and the red tones that dominates the the colder, the overall colder tones of the photo. Overall, the color tones in this image is complement to each other as well, and I think this is what makes the picture pop in terms of the sky. Um, I I actually named this um, picture as a the crown of God of Us. I think I, this picture was featured in one of the uh, Flickr, um, uh, I can't remember the name now, it's Flickr, some, some, something that the, the Flickr take it as um, like a show, one of the show picture of the day, but yeah, yeah, so that's that. So the next point I, I will look at is the leading line and also the visual flow. So the leading lines is um, something that leading lines into something interesting. It doesn't necessarily need to be something um, that um, that's interesting in terms of the fo uh, uh, focal point. The leading line creates depth in, of your image and normally associated with the rule of third. So. The first example, which is this, um, I'm not sure whether any of you guys been to this particular spot. Um, I only been the first time this is taken in five years ago. So, with the obvious um, highway, I think this is is it Jalan Tun Raza? I, I think it's Jalan Tun Raza. So I'm using this line uh, as a leading line to take my eye from the bottom of the picture. As a, and as an S curve that goes up to the background, which is the um, the KLCC, you know, the, the KL Center. Again, the tones used in, in, in this image is between the warm light <clears throat> on the highway and also the blue tones sur surrounding in the shadows that gives the the, the line pop. You just draw your eyes straight into into the city. So the second photo is. Another famous location in Kyoto, Japan, that I went last year. Um, if you can see, there's a light uh, at, at the foreground that draws you into the pagoda itself. Um, I think this, I, I, I've got this picture quite lucky, to be honest with you, because um, throughout the day, there's, um, throughout the sunset, there's no car that goes around and that uh, drives up this road. Um, I, I was quite lucky there's one, actually there's one little K car that drives on the road and I managed to get the picture. Um, it was quite crowded really, so um, if you want to go to this spot again, you need to go there, be on time and early to, to secure your own spot. 
So the third photo, this is in the UK. Um, the interesting point is the castle in the background. So here, I'm using the water on the right as a leading light to the castle itself. And also the clouds on the, on the clouds in the sky that also acts as a leading line that goes from the top left into the castle. <clears throat> and then we have this um, lump of rock on the bottom right. Um, with the moss on it, and, and, has, and um, it has a small effect of the leading line that leads itself to the castle. So this is how I see when I there um, and shooting shooting at, uh, at the scene. So the fourth one, this is in New York. Um, I think it's much straightforward as well. It just it, it the bridge itself is from the foreground and leads you back to the um, background, right? Um, on the right, and then from there, um, my eyes draws to the towards the left to the big city itself, and then from there, there's a there, there's a little highway that on the um, mid frame that draws me from the eye back to the bridge again. So this is how I see this particular image in terms of the visual flow. So from from the right foreground to the um, the background and then back to the city and then the little road that draws me back to the bridge again so this is how i see when i compose this scene so that's that and then the third one is the balance the balance in photography is observed when an image has subject areas that look balanced throughout the composition it is achieved by shifting the image or just opposing subjects within its <clears throat> within the objects, tones and colors are of equal visual weight. And I think this is quite a tricky one because it, uh, how, how do I put this? It, it all depends on the scene. How do you want to balance it, um, your, 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 your picture? So the first one I want to show you how I see it is the balance weight created by this huge border on the foreground. And um, if there's only one ball up present, which is, say, for example, if you only see half of the picture, or there's a ball up that's missing, it's, it, it feels to me that the ball up itself, like shifting to the left or to the right, it, it doesn't create the balance there. So if there's two ball up that's quite identical, then it seems that there's a balance between those two. And also having the trees on, this, on both sides of the boulevard that leading into the center of the, of the image also create the balance. Which, um, in, in the full, in, in the background, and obviously the color tones is simple as well. Um, rather than um, uh, increase the um, the contrast itself, I tone it down. All the I tone down the contrast and also um, the the color itself. Tone it down to um, to get into like three tones or two or three tones between those those tones. So it creates a, a a simplicity rather than having a mixture of green green light, uh, green colors to you know all the rainbow colors present within that uh, picture now on this image um, this image has a balance of the uh, of the hill on the mid and foreground which is here where i'm standing and this little, I would say, is, is a mountain, so it's kind of balanced out between those two. And, and also the light, which is the, um, in, um, the sunrise that, that is on the right, that's shining through and hits this little mountain. And also you have this um, shadow, which is the cold tones in the shadow that balance it out between the warmer tones and the blue tones here. And also, obviously, there is uh, another leg on, on this right side that balance off on the far left side over here. This is how I see this image is kind of balanced between the composition, the light itself, and also the elements itself. So move on to the next photo that I want to show. <clears throat> For this, oh, sorry. For this image, um, I think the balance is achieved between the sunlight in the in, in the foreground and also and the, and the shadow in the mid and the foreground. 
um, and also the 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 the, the, the light itself, uh, the starburst from the sunlight, balanced off from this uh, golden leaves over here. And this golden leaf also balanced off the darker tones or uh, of, of the side of this card that, that, that are included in my foreground. So overall, I think this picture for me is, is kind of balancing off between the light, the foreground, the darkness, and also the trees over here that they also taken the weight of the car as well so it kind of balances it off between those two right the last image on this um this one is pretty much similar to what i spent for so you've got the sunrise on the on, on the right right in the background here and then you've got the uh, dark shadows on on the mid and and, and the foreground here rather than doing the uh, two exposures and try to increase the shadow to, to, to show the, the, the details on the art. I opted it out just to show where I am and also to, to get the viewers um, the true scene of where at, at the current position. And um, the, the sea is also balanced off from this cliff and also this, uh, um, the, the, the beaches over here on, on the left. And um, overall, I also see there's a big S curve line from the foreground here that leads your eye towards the cliff and also towards this um, the, 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 the lighter area, the warm tones here. So there's, there's a balance between the, the earth itself and the sea itself and also the color overall. This is how I see this scene when, when, when I'm composing. Right. <clears throat> so moving on to the next one, which is um, the layers. Now, this layers involves using the foreground, the subject, and the background, so that all layers of the image work together to tell a comprehensive story. So, let's look at the first picture. <clears throat> the first picture. This this picture tells you there's a there's a um, the lights happening in the foreground, which is again leads you on to the mid ground to to to, to the middle section of the um, picture. And in the middle section, section of this picture, there's a, another layer of it that shows there's a light. <clears throat> it, it's actually it's a motorway, they call it, or a highway in Malaysia. It's a highway that shows that there's a light that draws your eye from, from the mid section to the. To, oh, sorry. Follow this to that. <clears throat> to the background here. The background, which is the, uh, the Canary Wharf in London. So I can see like, that there's three layers happening. So you've got the, the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer. And uh, this picture is taken with my Canon 100 to 400 mil. I think this is at 400 mil uh, telephoto lens. So it doesn't really necessarily need to be a wide angle lens when you take your um, a landscape photography. It could be any focal length. So the next one, <clears throat> Is <clears throat> all right. Bear with me a second. Let me take a cup of tea. So this picture is taken with um, with my If I remember, is this taken with seventy to two hundred at two hundred mil? Again, it's a telephoto lens. So um, often layers are incorporated by using telephoto lens and pointing towards the layers created by the shear mountain or mountain distance or raising fog in the morning could create a moody atmosphere when and when i compose this shot i have in mind to use a telephoto lens to capture the moment of the rising fog in the scenery and uh, this is a woodlands created uh, located in lake district but the fog has created different layers and it looks like a mystery little islands for me so you get it feels like there's a little island here and then there's a big island over here as well and then there's a, <clears throat> and then on the background of here, I kind of like tone it down because it doesn't need to be, I, I don't need to show the details of the foreground and foreground and also the background. I just want the viewers to look at this mist that, um, that, that's raising from the ground. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the third photo. 
Now, this is one example that shows the, um, the seasonal transition from fall to winter, or sorry, from, from fall to the winter. So in the foreground, we have this golden leaves indicating the fall season, and then further through the, to the second layer in the, um, in the middle top section of the image, and um, the top, the, uh, at, the back, at, at the background, uh, this is uh, Mount Washington, and it's, it's literally um, covered with snow right now, but uh, unfortunately there's a little cloud uh, at the top, so you can't really see it, but it is snowing right up there. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next one. This is in Mount Fuji, we all know. Um, this one, I think this is a better clear, this is a, a clearer picture to show the layers. So we have a layer in the, in the foreground, which is the boat that they tied up for the winter. And then we've got, the, in, in the middle part, we have the reflection that shows um, the, the Mount Fuji there. And then in the top section, there's a, like a mini tree laser as well. Uh, be, be, before it leads your eye to the Mount to, to the Mount Fuji itself. So let's move on to the next point, which is the frame. <clears throat> I guess the title says it all. So the first one. So this picture taken in um, Budapest. So I use this um, terrace as my frame. Um, to, um, sorry, as my frame to the subject of the Budapest Parliament in the middle of, of, of this image here. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. So you just use um, whatever that's appeared in front of it. It could be a door, doorway, it could be a window, it could be a tree, the leaves of a tree, etc. The other use of the frame is to complement and highlight of the subject. So the next picture that I'm going to show you is, <clears throat> this is in New York, um, Central Park, uh, it's, it's a Soviet day, and I'm using this arches in, what's it called, uh, Batista Terrace. So I'm using this arch um, to show you um, the condition outside, where uh, to show you where the fountain is, and also the condition outside, which is I think they call it mist, um, and also it's snowing outside, literally, when I was there. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the next picture. This is not, um, now, the light itself has created a frame with like three frames within the picture. So this is, there's, there's actually, there's no frame within this, within this picture, but with a clever composition and also how you expose um, the, the, the scene. It, it has this effect of framing. So there's three frames here. So the, the left frame shows there's a light at the ceiling and the people um, waiting for the train to come. So you've got the left, center, and the right. And obviously I, I, I turned this into a black and white image and also toned down the shadow to, to create a visual of uh, uh, three frames rather than try to show um, the brick wall, which is just a big patch of red. And, uh, and I think it doesn't create or help um, um, to create this uh, frame effect for me. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the last one over here um, on this subject framing is, I use this tree on the left and the right itself and the branches and part of the shadow to create like a frame um, to compose um, to um, so the, to draw the viewer eye to the, um, the, the the focal point in the middle of this picture here. This is the American barn in New Hampshire, and the surrounding with the um, surrounded with these um, golden leaves um, in, in in the fall. So. It doesn't, some, some it doesn't necessarily need to be um, showing the whole scenery. You could use, you know, you could cleverly use this trees, the branches, everything to create like a frame for you. So it, it, it creates a feel of um, <clears throat> you are in, in, in a changing season um, before the winter arrives. So let's move on to the to number six point, which is the foreground. So foreground is literally what is in front of you, what's on your feet, and does it look interesting? 
um, normally to get this effect, you go, uh, you will use a wider um, focal length, which is 14 mil or 16 mil or 24 mil. Even. So to um, this is to create a, a dramatic effect between the mirror and the far object. So to get a sharp image um, between the foreground and the background, you you will you, you will need to use a small aperture to increase the depth of field. Or alternatively, you could take um, a multiple shots, uh, and then where, where you focus one on, on the foreground, and then one maybe in the mid, and another one on the floor, or on the background, and then you you merge them in in, in the in the Photoshop. So the first picture I want to show you is this waterfall. So rather than um, showing the water flow and the, the water flow in the foreground and also the obviously the uh, the, the waterfall in the in, in the midground, uh, I I have included something interesting in the foreground, which is this um, rock with the moss cover on it. So to get this picture, I, I need to get quite low and obviously get my feet wet in the, I don't know, like five degree water even, and it is uh, winter condition over there in Iceland. Um, I think I was about three feet away from this rock. The rock itself is not that big, but the, the, the reason the rock looks huge is because I, I, I was quite close to the rock itself, and I use um, 60 mil wide angle lens to capture this um, to this image. So the second one I would like to show you is in Iceland again. This is in um, Dekifoss. This is one of the uh, biggest waterfalls in Iceland, and I use this in the foreground. I use this uh, rich rock here. Um, to draw your eye as a foreground and also to draw your eye to this waterfall element in in, in the fore, in, in the uh, middle section of the picture and also in the foreground uh, in, in the background I'm sorry in the background to show you the, um, the the nature force and the element itself so let's move on to the uh, third picture. So this, on this one, it, it is quite clear. I use this properly, this flower here, as my foreground, um, as my foreground interest, and I use this fencing here to draw your eye to this um, castle here, and also obviously the um, the sunset they are they are composing of. So ra ra so rather than using my um, telephoto lens to to take a picture of this sun and also the castle itself which is this bit here i use my wide angle lens to include the foreground interest which is literally right in front of me to, to, to compose this shot <clears throat> so do you guys have any questions so far hmm. okay i shall move on so the next one is, is the reflection. So this again is a pretty much straightforward to find a reflective surface. The reflection can be used to eliminate distractions when there is nothing interesting in the foreground. So you may you may need to get close to the surface. Waves can be used as a distortion or imperfect, or you could use an imperfect reflective surfaces. So, but this is where you, you can emphasize a symmetrical effect. Uh, as you go first, the first picture, this is in Japan, Mount Fuji. So when I, when I arrive to this scene, there's literally nothing in the foreground that interests me to include within my picture when I compose for this shot. So I was lucky because the lake is quite calm itself. So I use this um, re re reflection um, kind of method to compose for to compose this scenery. <clears throat> so I use this reflection here as my foreground, and also reflect it to the cloud as well, and also obviously the color itself from the um, uh, sunrise does help 
on this oval image. So let's move on to the next one. In this situation, this is quite similar to the previous one where there's nothing interesting in the foreground. So I'm using this, um, sorry, calm, um, I think it, this is, this is a um, man-made canal, but <clears throat> because it is such an old building, so um, the, the other side of the canal has been blocked off. So it's, it's, this is what it creates, uh, um, this kind of like <clears throat> um, calm effect on a lake, you could say. And this is quite a um, pretty famous location for this, the 30 foot um, 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 image in, in, in the UK. And obviously with the uh, sunset, the, the light complements to this picture of rugby, where you've got the warm tones from the, um, from the sky itself and also reflecting to this um, building and complement to the teal color on the sky and in the foreground itself. So let's move on to the last one. <clears throat> now this picture, actually I've flipped this picture 100, 100, 180 degree vertically to create like an illusion effect of the, uh, the rock falling from the sky. Yeah, it actually isn't. <clears throat> so um, rather than compose of the reflection itself, like on my couple of previous photos, they are, I'm using this rock as um, like a complementary foreground, well, like a sky effect, a foreground effect from the top to complement the, uh, re re the, the reflection in the lake and on the, um, the mountain itself. It's, it's actually, I, I flipped this picture, so, it's kind of, so you, when you look at it, it's kind of like uh, weird. <laughs> but the right. reflection is so clear. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is not, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and what time did I arrive on this scene? Probably like five o'clock in the morning, four or five o'clock in the morning. So again, early lights and late nights. <clears throat> right, let's move on to the last point, which is the simplicity. So simplicity shows a clear main subject. How you position the subject or moving about to remove the background distortion in the image, or you have a um, large aperture, aperture lenses such as f1.4 or f1.2, where you can shoot wide open to create those clean bokeh to, to eliminate the, um, the background. And um, simplicity also includes a, a photo that includes a lot of negative space. And Obviously, you want to keep the color palette for minimum, or you could convert into a black and white, which is just um, uh, uh, two tones, you know, the white and the black. <clears throat> so the first picture is this waterfall. Um, the reason I composed this shot at the top of my mind is to show the force, the natural force itself of the waterfall that, you know, it dropped from the top to to, to, to the river at the, at, at the foreground. And um, I got the, the color itself is not that bad, but when I turn this to, into a black and white, I think it's, it's much, much more of a simpler photos in terms of showing, you know, you've got the, um, some mood, moody, so like, <clears throat> um, gray or natural gray in the sky. And then you have this um, mixture of a creamy milk um, color and the blue from the water and obviously on the foreground it's kind of like darkish because it's in the um, uh, it's in the dawn um, dawn time so you don't really get a lot of light down here so it, for me it doesn't really um, show the, the simplicity that I want to uh, uh, photograph when, when, when I had it on my mind so I uh, convert this into a black and white to show even more simple picture of the uh, nature of the, uh, the water. <clears throat> so move on to the next one. Um, this one I need to uh, specifically thank you, Sifu Michael, to uh, that he he bring me to this location. And without him, uh, I am uh, known. <laughs> I think most of yeah. us has, has been there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, this is quite simple. Um, Thirty-five mil focal length. 
um, long exposure, and then obviously with the clever Photoshop, I remove all the distraction just to show you the uh, damage bridge, and it shows clearly. Even though there's a negative space and in in the um, background and on on the both side, I, I think it complements to the overall picture. So yep. move on to the next one. So there's a two picture in one slide. <clears throat> so on the next on the left one here is the northern last I photographed in Iceland. Um, <clears throat> this is quite simple because they, it's just a dot a dark sky with the um, natural appearances of the north, uh, northern lights, which is green color and reflective to us on the, uh, I think this is a sea. I think this is a sea, yeah, it comes come, come, come in from the sea. Um, <clears throat> and, and also there's a little red boy at, at, at the foreground as well. I think that also complement or to tell the viewers that this is um, like a port. And the way I see it is there's only two or three color tones within this picture, picture itself. Though, so that's why I classify this as um, simplicity. <clears throat> so the, the one on, on the right here, um, <clears throat> this one is just, why, why do I classify this as a simplicity? Because this is just a flat land. Um, flat land itself. And then you've got this road that leads you from the foreground to the background, um, and then also take you to this. Um, I think this is like a, a a volcano or something. I can't remember what what this is. And um, obviously, the tone itself is just two or three tones. You got the blue blue tones, and then you got the gray tones, and also these yellow tones over here that dominates the the, the picture. So that's why this. Uh, Quite a simple picture, in my view. <clears throat> so moving on to the next one, this is quite similar to the uh, the, the, the second slide that I show you. Um, this this one here. I photographed this scene um, with the horizon. That, that, that there's a horizon here. Uh, uh, the sea horizon run across. The, the, the middle frame and uh, in the background obviously there are some ports right at the uh, at, at the edge there but with the clay of photography I remove it and create this simple uh, negative spaces that surrounding this um, this uh, this is a disused light tower in, in, in the UK and I toned down the color as well just to show um, um, to two tones or three tones even in, in, in this picture. So it's just simplify the color tones that helps me to create this uh, simplicity image. So the last two images I want to show you is, this is in Japan, um, in Hokkaido. So this is quite a simple picture. Again, you get the snow in the back, in, in the foreground here that covers the, um, uh, the, the farmland, and then you've got the trees on the right, and also the, the, the clouds over on the left and the fencing here. So these two kind of complement each other and balance off the overall picture. And it's just simple. It's just blue tones in the sky, the white, and I don't know, some red tones in the, um, in, in the tree, and that's it. There's nothing more um, colors that um, pops out on this image. So last but not least, this is again in Japan as well, in Hokkaido. This is even simpler. Just the white tones and the blue tones in the sky. And the fancy word that, tip, that draws your eye from the foreground to the background to, to nowhere. So there's literally, there's no nothing, there, there, there's no um, focal point per se. Um, it's just a picture to show um, the particular scene that leads you to nowhere. <laughs> that, that's why I, I see this as a, 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 a simplicity picture. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Michael, over to you, if you have any questions. Yeah, just keep thank you, up. Robin, thank you, Robin. Coming back to well, this picture, it, it does give us an impression that, you know, um, the fans actually divide the frame into half, and you yeah. have upper part and the lower part. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just give us that kind of. Okay, guys. Uh, anyone has got any question to you know uh, to Robin? Uh, just now, call uh, we seen uh, we seen asking the previous top of the bridge photo. The bridge. Yeah. Yeah, the one with the bridge. I think. Uh, bro. This one. I think the very. The last one, I think. Very very fun fun slide. Ah, uh, okay. I know. The cityscape one. Uh. Was it a New York New York Bridge? Yeah, on top one. On top one. This one. Ah, uh, not not the one on top of the road one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, this one. How you yeah. take this photo? Um, all right. You see this um pedestrian walkway here. Oh, uh, okay. okay. yeah. So when you come to the, I think it's, this is the middle of the bridge. There's a section where you could choose out, um, where you could stand on like on the platform, just literally on top of this road, and then this is where I I, I took this picture from. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very interesting picture. I do. I do like this picture, especially you know, uh, <laughs> the contrast of the car. Was it a taxi? Was it a cab there? That was. Yeah, it's a cab. It was. It's a yellow yellow cab, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So it does. You know, it does draw our eyes towards that. You know, that 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 cab. Yeah, it gives us a good, very good contrast there. Hmm. Uh, any other question, guys? Oh, maybe I have a question for you, uh, yeah. Robin. Yeah. In all your pictures, yeah. I see that you know you don't really use that much of filter, or you don't really uh, focus that much of long exposure, like you no know, three minutes or five minutes as kind of exposure. Do you want to yeah. share with us a little bit of your you know your style on this? Yeah. Um, when 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 I started my landscape, obviously you know you buy all this uh, kit and stuff, and uh, I, I literally invest in. Uh, the early model of the, uh, I think they call fire, fire crash filters is, is a set filter. I think I paid about 250 quid for the, for the set of it. And when I start using it, um, it helps me to, 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 to balance up between the sky and the foreground itself, which is great. But the, after two years of using it, and I realized that actually, I find it better to to do a bracket shot and then use the Photoshop um, to blend the images together. It gives me for more flexibility. So this is why I thought, and this is why I practice it. I, I start practicing it without using the filter, because when you're out in you know hiking, hiking in the mountains, or if you're out in the in the city itself, you know anywhere, even even if I sell going to London, I don't, I. I want to keep my tools to the minimum. So when I walk a long distance, I don't know, a couple of uh, 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers a day, I want to lug a lot of, of, of gears with me. And a lot of my pictures, it's not pre-planned. It's like I have a, a camera in my hand. And when I arrive to the scene, a lot of the time it's just like snap and then, oh, I got it. And without having to put it in the tripod, Fiddling around with the, with the filters and then try to compose again. Um, if I, I would do that if I were in a pre plan or a workshop, you know, running a workshop or, or even joining a workshop. But if I were to walk out um, to the sea, just 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 walking about and see what's what, I normally don't carry a lot of stuff. I normally carry you know, a camera with um, maybe 24 to 105. And literally, that's it. Really, I just bring these gears with me. Even it, 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 even if even when I was in this scene, I'm just carrying the camera and and the lens. Twenty. I think this is with twenty four. No, this is sixteen to thirty five mil, and that's it. So I use this focal both of this focal and try to compose my shot rather than having all the gears and then try to fiddling around, change the lens, make sure it's work. It doesn't because it, when when what I learned is um, when, when I'm out shooting, sometimes I only bring one um, fixed lens, which is a 50 mil. I just use that, just force myself using that. 
and just walk about and take pictures just using that format. That actually that trains your eyes when you have that specific focal in mind. It trains your eye to how 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 you see the scene as well. So that literally helps you. Then uh, yeah, that's a, this is how I how I train my eyes. Let's put it this way. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and um, sorry, I, I haven't touched the um, the long as uh, the the long exposure. The yeah, right, yeah. filters that I use is uh, ten stop neutral density, and very rarely um, what do you call that the uh, circular polarizer, and that's it. That's all I use in my gear. I, I, I don't bring any other filters, and or I know I actually no longer um, own any of the filters anymore because. With the photo, with the clear Photoshop right now, it is kind of easy to to bring back the details and the highlights, um, and also the newer um, camera they have what twelve to fourteen or fifteen dynamic range, so that helps as well. Mm. <laughs> sounds 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 you know uh, very interesting because I think most of the landscape photographer in our region here. For yeah. me, you know, they have filters, they have tripod, and yeah. they have lenses, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think yeah, you're kind of right, you know. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. So for us, we most of us actually own a car, so we normally drive to the location so we can load everything in our car and you know yeah. and bring it down to the beach or bring it down to you know the area where we want to shoot. But if we were to hide a mountain, you know, yeah. and we probably need to bring a luggage to go up, I think it's not gonna be easy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. um, I can agree with you on that. Um, you know, especially if you drive to the scene where it is easy accessible, maybe within ten or ten minutes walk, I think that's manageable. Um, if I would, but for me right now, the filters doesn't doesn't play part of my uh, landscape anymore. So <laughs> I don't really think about it anymore because um, when you when you bracket the shot, it's quite easy for you to um, to blend the images in Photoshop. Rather than trying to fiddle with your your um, uh, the the filters you set up and you put it on the tripod etc etc, whereas I could use that time when when you fiddle with your with, with your uh, filters, I could use the time to scout around more and try to find other compositions. So this is where this is this is how I view it. Mm. Uh, one of our member, C uh, two. Uh, he, he asked about the bridge just now. The bridge photo, uh, which he, bridge? He, uh, the Superscape, the New York, New York bridge, is it on top one? Uh, just now you review that. That's okay. Oh, okay. Do they have permission to be there or just walk in? Just walk. Uh, yep. Let me. Let me share my screen. Okay. Was it this one? Can't see your share screen. Ah, oh, okay, coming. Was it this one? Ah, uh, not this one. The the another one, another bridge. Daytime one. Another bridge. Day, daytime. Uh, daytime. Not this one, yeah, right? One. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, is need permission or just walk in? No, this is this is a public okay. open space. You don't oh, have to pay. Oh. Anything. You, just, you just you just you just walk about. You oh, okay. could walk across this bridge and then come back again as well. Okay. Uh, and yeah. another, another member, Jahaba, he, yeah. he asked uh, about the your your photography trip. Uh, is type yeah. type of pre plan or do you do research on? The area, time, weather, etc. <laughs> um, if I were to do a trip, or, or yeah, the, yeah. If, if I if I want to go to say New York City or Japan, obviously I would do some research. All right. If I go to Hokkaido, I would search. You know, um, I would do a Google search in Hokkaido and see what sort of pictures is there that interest me, and then. Um, the weather itself is really hard to judge. You just play by your ear. Okay. The weather can be good. The weather can be bad. But that the bad weather doesn't mean that um, you can't go and, and, and photograph. Yeah, I, I I I like winter. I like snow, 
And if it is snowing outside right now, I will I will be I, I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> because the snow the, 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 the snow condition creates a, a, a sim simple scene, just like in this picture here. Without the snow, it will be quite uh, busy yeah. with the steps here. Yeah, with the messy stuff. Yeah. And this one with the um, it is it literally still snowing. It it just create a, a moody scene. And for me, it, it just makes it better. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, <clears throat> yeah. before, actually, before I go to place a date, obviously, sometimes they are the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the most photographed places in, let's say, in Indonesia will, will, will be the, one of the uh, Mount Bromo, say, for example. So if I were to go there, I would try to make my itinerary work toward that place as well and plan, I don't know, three days, two to three days out there. And, um, and then I will, I, will, I will do a research, you know, um, how do I get there? Um, what sort of route do I need to use? Um, is, is it drivable? Uh, do I need to pay a tour guide to, to, um, to, to go into to, Mount Bromo, or can I do it by myself, which is cost saving? I always do that that, that sort of research before I uh, go 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 to the trip. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, any other questions, guys? You can actually drop your question in the chat box, chat box, or actually just switch on your mic and ask Robin directly. Yeah. Uh, Robin, would you mind to share with us your workflow? You know your typical workflow when it comes to post processing. Uh, okay. Do you use Do you use hundred percent Photoshop or do you use other software like Lightroom or? Uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. Now. I also, um, when, when I'm reading this photography magazine, I will try, I'll, I'll, if I see a particular thing that I like, I will do a research where it is and then I'll, I'll put it in, a, in, in, in my little notepad here. So if I go somewhere, um, say if I go to Salisbury in, in the UK, I, would, I'll, I, I have a couple of spots that, that I could go and photograph. Mm. It's just, 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 you know, just do a bit of a, like, you need to work, do a bit of a homework. Let's put it this, this way. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, let's do my lab now. <clears throat> you might take a while, guys, because my machine is 10 years old, so please bear with me. Um, Let's show you a simple one, which is, do you have um, any particular scene that you want me to show you on the slide? Guys, any any picture you want Robin to yeah. show us how he post-process it? Mm. Let's choose one, Robin. Just choose one. Yeah, yeah. Just choose one. Huh? <laughs> Just choose. All right. One. Okay. Bye. Um, yeah. Let's see. I'll, I'll I'll pick a simple one. Yeah. Um, Someone say the lonely lighthouse. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is there is a lot a lot of uh works to be done. I guess it's a fine art. Yeah. Under the category of fine art. Let, let, let me find a file. I think I might have, have saved my workflow. There we go. Uh, where is it? Ah, okay.
Oh, it's asking whether if, if you could, if you are kind enough to show the original raw file for this <laughs> Okay, yeah. Hang on, it's, um, it's loading the um, Photoshop. Bear with me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is there a particular reason you put the subject right in the middle or right in the center? Because this is such a simple photograph, if I put it on the uh -huh. left or the right, if there's mm. nothing to balance it off, it feels like it's the weight goes to, to, to the left or to the right. If there's something that mm. complements it, so it's kind of take the balance of this where the balance comes in. If there's two kind of identical lighthouse, then I could put two two of them on, on you know, one on each side. If this is just one, I think for me it works best in the middle because it's, it's just right in the middle. Everything is just like empty space. Yeah, okay. me just make a difference you know uh because you actually remove the horizon horizon line yeah yeah, yeah. with the horizon line i guess if you right put right in the middle i guess it will look a little bit odd but without the horizon line i think it's just just perfect yeah So this is the original image. Oh, there's nothing there, okay. Uh, so that's the original image. <clears throat> so when I, <clears throat> so when, when, when I wanted to um, do the adjustment on this, I th wait a second, I think I did some adjustment on the light. Uh, this is, Right, I use this to yeah. let me check if I do any adjustment. No, I okay, I did not do any adjustment in the uh, Lightroom, so I just export to the uh, Photoshop as it is. <coughs> so, this is the uh, raw file. And then the first step is I do a background copy and then blur everything off. So you, you won't see the horizon. Yeah. And then I convert it into um, black and white. So once I've done that and I decided to add a bit of a brightness to the image on the Radiant. top left. Mm -hmm. and, no, I, I think I just use brush to just brush it. Okay. Yeah, on the mask. And then I add a bit of a darkness in, in, in the foreground here. So it creates a bit of a, uh, like a transition from the light to the dark. And obviously, if you see, if you can see the arrow here, th these two arrow means I just want this effect to only affect the, uh, the layer below here, which is the background copy free. Yeah. It's only effect that it doesn't affect the um, the the last uh, the, the previous two layers. Yeah. So uh, what did I do with this? I can't remember. I'm holding up this thing. They're trying to create a shadow. Oh, okay. This one, <clears throat> I create another copy of this just to focusing on the um, on the column of the lighthouse itself and also the surrounding area. And then I turn it into black and white here. And what did I do here? I can't remember what I did here. I think, yeah, I, I think I, I, I used the smart filters to convert it into uh, black and white. And then that that is the, this bottom line is done, I think. And then, so when I copy this in, I use the, um, the selection mask to select this building here itself. 
and then I cut, I, I copy the and paste into a new layer. And then once that's done, I apply curves into this image to give a view of a contrast. And this contrast only affect the, the, the layer below it, which is this building here. And then from there, I reduce slightly on the contrast itself because I, I think it's too much. Yeah, I reduce the contrast actually all the way down. And then I created another layer um, that affects only to the building. Um, so we, I have some light transition from the left side of this tower to the uh, darkness on, on the right side here. So if you see it. And then once that's done, I use the um, hue and saturation um, layer to reduce the saturation. So this is where it gives me this kind of muted effect. And lastly, uh, I create another layer to sharpen it. And then that, that's it, job done. It, it looks simple, but it's actually quite time consuming because and, um, especially on this building um, building itself, I have to mask out, I have to zoom in here like this, really, really close and mask out all the, um, all, <clears throat> and, and mask out all, all the layers that I do not wish to show. So it does take a bit of time to zoom in. Obviously, you, know, you need to be go right into the edges just to make sure that you've got the smooth edges. Yeah. Mm. So that's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the easy one is the one in, um, it's actually one, the, the, the same bridge. Hang on a second. Let me show you around here. Uh, no, not this. Oh, actually, I have to show you something. I can show you this. This image I, I did it in um, just in Lightroom. So start with this is the original raw file. And then I use a present here to, to give a specific effect. So I got like how many are they? Like eight eight of them. So I just browse through which effect that, that gives me um the that, that gives the effect that I want. The priest on, on the preset. So I just browse through one by one and see which one works the best. I think I think I selected either this, I can't remember, I think I selected this one here. So once that's done, yeah, I selected this preset and then I adjust the the black clipping, which is this black blacks here, this slider here. And then I go to the lens, I go, yeah, I went to the lens correction and correct to en enable the um, profile picture, the camera camera profile picture, that, you know, so that you could do it or if you don't want it, you, you, you could take it off as well. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then from there, I literally just play, um, sorry, on on this scene, obviously, when you look at it, the building itself is tilted to the left, so it doesn't uh, level out. So you on the light when you go to the transform, and I use this crop button to to level out my to level out my picture. Once it's done, I use the uh, vertical to transform to so so you can get the um, the building straight a uh, vertical straight rather than tilting into the uh, image or tilting to the background. Off. Yeah. 
So once you've done your uh, perspective, you collected all the perspective, I just it, I, I, I literally just play around and see what the shadow does if I reduce it. The reason I reduce the shadow is to draw your eye into the bridge itself rather than having all the lights that bounce into the building. And then it just, you know, it, did, it doesn't lead your eye to the, um, to the Brooklyn Bridge. And then I also play around with the saturation, uh, whether to increase it or decrease it. You know, it, it, it's just a particular, it, it, it's how you want to create the picture and how you want to show it. Yeah, it, it, it's, this is individual taste, it's nothing fixed on, in, in the stone. Yeah. And I also use some radio filter as well um, to, to increase the center image. If you want to brighten up the center of the image or if you want to darken uh, to create the, um, the, the vignette effect around the image, uh, I use the radio filter. And then I also play around with the vibrance just to see you know, whether it gives me a, a warm tone or if you want to just a neutral tone. Let's put it this way. And then I also play around with the white clipping and, 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 and you know, just, 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 just to have a feel and to see what effect it does to me, to, to, to this picture, sorry. And I also play around the contrast. Um, lastly is I, I play around with the um, HSL button here. So this HSL, <clears throat> um, it effects on that on the individual uh, color itself. So if I want to increase only the, the, the blue tones in the blue sky, I just increase the blue tones. If I want to increase the red tones in the building, I just increase the red tones. Or if I want to decrease it. So it's only affecting that particular um, um, tones itself rather than the whole image. Because the saturation up here, this the both saturation and the vibrance affect the whole um, highlights and the shadow of the color. So this, this saturation here, it, it targets that particular color where you want to reduce it or even you want to increase it. Yeah. And the luminance is the, the, the lightness itself that within the color, I, I, let's see if I can show you on this. Yeah, see if I if I reduce orange, everything um, that colors orange are affected by this luminance. So if I increase it, only the orange tone affected by uh, by, by by this slider. So yeah, and there's there's not 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 much tone that I can show you on this one. So. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can see that, you know, um, yeah, the raw file itself actually is a very busy picture, very busy as in yeah. like, you know, you have quite a number of elements in the picture, quite a number of subjects in the picture. So yeah. I think, I think the decision, like, you know, the decision of which subject you want to bring out the most, and which are your secondary subjects, which are the, you know, your third subjects. I think that is where you are trying to, you know, to use the light. Yeah. Or to use the yeah, yeah to use the lights and to use the color to emphasize or actually to you know to hide them, yep. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, uh, well, I don't want to play with this one. Hang on a second. If I use mm. this picture, if I use this to do a normal what what people does, which is increase saturation and then increase the vibrance, mm. um, maybe clarity, and then people like you know, increase the shadow, reduce the highlight. And then maybe a little white, the black, uh, okay. Exposure, I don't need to. And then uh, lens correction, let's do that, yeah. And to me, it, it, this, this image is good, but there's a lot of things happening. You've got the colors here, the building itself, and then you've got the road, which it looks kind of like dirty. And then you've got this deep part of the light here. It's kind of like distracting as well. So from, in order to draw your eye more pleasantly into that, in, into the Brooklyn Bridge. So yeah, this is what I did on, oh, hang on. Slow, ah, it's very slow. This is why I toned down, toned everything down just to, you know, to, to, to 
for the viewer to emphasize in the bridge itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good uh, eye flow picture. Yeah. Uh, any other question, guys? Howard, any question for yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tonight a little bit quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll feel tired. Yeah. I think that's it really, right? Oh, uh, yeah, Robin. Uh, one quick question: How yeah. how do you do focusing? You know, uh, in winter, especially when you know when everything is actually full of snows. Do, do you, is it easy uh, to do focusing? Because everything is white. Yes, um, it depends. You, if it is, um, if if you're using a telephoto lens, that can be tricky because when you use a telephoto lens, which means you are focusing on the quite a quite a distant away uh, um, subject. So if it is snowing, and or if, if if it is foggy or misty, then without the contrast, it's hard for the for, for the camera to focus in it. So normally what I do on that scenario is I will put in the tripod, obviously, and put it into the uh, the live view, and then I will just manual uh, manual focus to that scene and, and, and rely on, on the back of the camera um, to, to, to get a sharp image. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And um, obviously, if it depends on your shutter speed. If the shutter, shutter speed is fast enough, then I'll just use my hand and and press the trigger if it is i don't know a half a second or a second or longer then i'll use the uh, remote to to come to um to take a shot sometimes i'm 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 just so lazy that i, I can't even bother to put the uh, the remote trigger in i'll just use 10 second timer and be done <laughs> <laughs> but more, the most important thing is make sure your tripod is on the steady platform and your if you if you on the bridge, sometimes uh, the bridge itself is um, um, moving, so you have to be careful with that. You have to. You have to I, I think that's one I use the body to uh, press down on, on, onto the bridge, so it doesn't move that much. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey, you have any question? Oh, uh, no, I, I just came in, sorry. I rushed to come in to listen to Sifu. I, I'm not catching up anything yet. Yeah. I just came in. I, yeah. Because I'm seeing that, you know, you're, you're actually switch on your microphone if you thought that you have any, you have question for us. Oh, no, no. In case I want, I just, I just say, I just came in. So I want to listen first. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Robin, one yeah. more question. Uh, under what what type of situation you you use a uh, manual focus, or will you use manual focus um, for landscape? For landscape, if I have time, then yeah. I will use manual focus. Such as if if I were to um, the blend blend images in Photoshop, I would use uh, manual focus, oh, focusing okay. on the on the foreground manually focus. And then really focus to 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 the mid 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 part of the picture and also to the foreground uh, to the background. Sorry. So that on on that scene, I uh, normally we use a, a, a manual. Okay. Yeah. So for for Photoshop purposes. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They are. I actually I learned a trick um, when 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 I was um, hiding from one of the uh, photographer. He. He said, "If you if if you put your um the focusing ring on on on, on you know there, there, there is a 
distance measure on, 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 on your camera. Let me show you. Right, this one here, I, I, I don't know whether you can see it. This particular here? Can't see because. Uh, yeah, there's a distance. Uh, I think it's hyper focal distance, is it? Correct, yes, that's it. Um, there is a point where if you if you put your focus into that point, you could literally just snap, 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 and he was right. But it's, it only works when you don't have any close foreground, so you, need, you have to uh, bear that in mind. Otherwise, it does work yeah. only for the landscape. Understand. Mm. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Kiswa. Any questions for our Sifu Robin? <laughs> if uh, no, then we will end this section. Michael? Yeah, I think uh, if no further questions, yeah. um, let's, let's take a group photo maybe. Yeah. Good photo. Good photo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's right. Ah, Jimmy. Hello, Jennifer, Jennifer. Wong, eh? Wong, Wong. Hey, hey, Oh, it. Okay, that's my lah. Huh? Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, all good one. Okay, I think uh, thanks so much, Robin, for you know, for sharing your landscape journey with us. Thank you. Thanks for all You're the welcome. knowledge. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's nice. See you all tomorrow. Mm. We'll see you all next week. Good night. Okay. okay. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.